these two questions together. The main thing, the main goal here is for you to have thought. Just to think, to reason, okay? Uh, so that's what we're gonna do to together now, all right? We're gonna reason through this whole problem. You know, think about what is volume and what is area, just a quick reminder of that. Uh, set up some inequalities, all right? And then you're on your way, all right? So, we're, we're talking about, in this first part, volume. We're talking about the volume of this thing, which is clearly, it's made obvious to you that it's made of two boxes, okay? Two rectangular prisms. Uh, and it wants to know about the volume of the whole thing. And uh, just from talking with a couple of you, I don't think I'm spoiling too much to say that to find the volume of the whole thing, we'd have to add together the volumes of this box and this box, right? Am I spoiling anything? Is there anything you didn't grab onto right away? Okay, even if you found the volume, let's just start with this right box here. Even if you found the volume of the right box, I just want to make sure that we understand why 24 is the volume of the right box, okay? So let's run through that real quick. Uh, what is volume? What is kind of a definition of volume, Sean? Good. How many cubes can fit inside of a 3D thing? Right? How many cubes? Uh, and you might remember 3 times 2 times 4 gives you the volume, right? but let's, uh, let's understand a little more why that is. Okay? Let's start with a 3 times 2. Let's see what 3 times 2 tells us about this shape. Okay? On this side here, it measures 1, 2, 3 feet, let's say. On this side, it measures 2. So when I do 3 times 2, what does 3 times 2 tell me about the shape, Cadence? On the bottom of the, this, at the bottom of this uh, box? Yeah, box, mm -hmm. there are six um, um, squares inside. Very good. On okay, so let me just let me just draw that real quick, okay? So what Cadence is saying is we could, you know, split it this way, three, you know, into three sections, split it this way into two sections, right? And we see six little sections, and those six sections are what? Shapes. They're squares. They're squares, right? This side is is clearly one, right? One of these two is one. And this is one. So this is a square that's one by one. All of these squares are the same shape. They're all squares. All of these things are the same shape. They're all squares. They're one by one squares. And clearly, how many are there? Six. There's six of them, right? You could fit three along here, two along here. Right? You see what my goal was at the beginning of the year when I was talking about what is area, right? You were thinking about it rather than just calculating it. Does that make sense? Do you see my grand plan? So we can think about things thinking about what the area is, we are, have, have very well laid out that there are six squares along here. Okay, now this measurement here is four, okay? So it measures, so let's put that in half, and that in half, and we get a nice picture of four. It measures four along that way. Okay, so if we then mark out a little square here, okay, and then we Fill all of this in. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I should have done it that way. There, okay. What is this thing? Cube. It's a cube. It's a one by one by one cube. Right. How many of them can I fit along the bottom here? Six. Six of them, right? And there's, when I go up to this first one, there's just enough room to squeeze in six cubes along the bottom there, right? So I got a layer of six cubes. Now how much room do you like? How many? Uh, layers of six cubes, do I have room for? Four. Four. Four, so I have, well, six cubes along the bottom here. See if I can draw that real quick. Not too quick, not too well. You get the idea. I can put six cubes down there, and I can put six cubes on top of that, and six cubes on top of that, and six cubes on top of that. Four layers of six cubes is how many cubes? 24. 24 cubes. Okay. I hope everybody could have laid out an explanation like that, no problem. But at the very least, we, we all understood that very well, and maybe we could explain it. Like if your parents were to ask you, what is volume, you could 
lay it all down, or somebody asks you why is the three times two times four, why does that give you 24, and what does 24 mean, and why is it the volume, okay? So that's pretty easy when all the numbers are there, 24, it's very concrete. Right. But we come over here, and we've got one of the sides is x. How do we calculate the volume of a box with one of the sides is x, a number that we don't know? Somebody knew, I only had like three people today. How are we going to calculate the volume of a box where we don't even know how long one of the sides is? Johnny? Six times x, and where do you get six? Uh, it's the two from the bottom. Ah, so this side's two, so come over here, this side must be two as well. And then the height is three. So three, so we, we've established that the length times base times height will give you the volume of the box. Here's a box, it has a, a height of three, and uh, what's it called, a width, okay, a width of two, three times two times the unknown x, that's six x. Because we have enough room here for six squares, right? And how many how many stacks of, of six cubes can I fit? X of them, however many x is. Right? So six times x number of cubes can fit in there. Okay, so the how would I calculate the total volume of all the boxes together? Ready? Well, I don't hold the boxes you together. Work, but you can do forty-two. Um, okay. Well, what I'm asking is, since it does t say the volume of the solid, right, this whole solid, and this solid is made of two solids, just the question, how do I find the total volume of this whole solid? You would find the volume of both the squares and add them together. So what's the volume of this one? 24. And the volume of the other one? But how would I calculate it once I know what x is? Six x. Right, six times x, and I do what with those? You said it yourself, just to add them, right? Add them together? Okay. So then you need to add together, that'll give us the total volume. All right, but it says that it needs to be, right, this total needs to be greater than or equal to 42 cubic units. So Joseph? then you would put the greater than or equal to sign. Greater than or equal to. Put 42 on the other side. We would figure out what x needs to be bigger than or equal to in order for the, the total thing to be greater than 42 cubic units. Right? Like we, know, we can just tell from looking at it, if we just had this box, 24 uh, cubic units would not be enough. It needs to be 42 cubic units. So x can't be, say, 0. Right? This has to have some additional volume over here. Right? 1, that's not going to be enough. But we can use this inequality to find exactly, without guessing and checking find exactly what x needs to be. But there's a little bit of a challenge okay, that lies in this inequality. It's kind of a new kind of an inequality, but it also looks a lot like some equations that we've solved before. Okay? So kind of approach it like an equation if you're not sure what to do here. We're just trying to get x by itself. So how would we solve an inequality like this? Well, and all these people are ready today. Anybody else? Charlie? Mm -hmm. 24. Good. Now we have 6x by itself. It's greater than or equal to 18. 18, thank you. Charlie, you want to finish it off? So I have a 6 on both sides. So x needs to be greater than or equal to 3. So this side needs to be at least 3 in order for the total thing to have a total volume of 42 cubic units or more. Okay, this one's almost a little bit hard lot of sides to this thing, right? We want the, we we're looking for the, the surface area of this thing. Real quick, this is all, we kind of answered this question in talking about the volume, but what is area? What is area? And the squares will fit, right, on a surface, right? It's a 2D thing, it's not a 3D thing. Um, so we need to add up all of the sides, like all of the squares that fit on all the sides of this entire solid, right? So we kind of want to be careful. We keep track of everything, right? How many sides are there? Six sides. 
Let's see, we've got uh, one in the front, right? Like we got, it's kind of hard to show you. We got one right there, two, three, four back there, uh, five, and this side is six, and then this side is seven, right? Uh, that was the back, at the top is eight. Uh, and it looks like nine, this little thing right here, and then ten. That's a lot of sides, right? Mm -hmm. Some the of bottom. these are copies of others. Yeah, the bottom will stay the same. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on how you approach it. You could you could approach it as the bottom of this box and the bottom of this box put together, uh -huh. or just kind of doing that at once. So let's start with that because well, it just got brought up. If we just treat the base of this, which runs along the whole shape, right, as just like one big rectangle, how would we find the area? How do we find the area of a rectangle? Length, yeah, length times width, base times height, whatever it, it, it calls for, right? Just like we did here, two times three is six. We did the same thing here, two times three is six. Right, so how how long would this side be? Two. two. How long is this side? From here to there? 3 3x. Three 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 here, over to there? 3x. Three three x. So x you're. Is three? Yeah, x plus 3, right? Because oh, yeah. you wouldn't say, if I told you that this was uh, 4, you wouldn't say 4 times 3 is how long this side is, would you? Mm -hmm. You'd add them together, not multiply them together. So 2 times 3 plus x. All right, so we, we've got the bottom, so I don't know, maybe we can. Um, Scratch these out. All right, we got those guys. That takes care of both of the, the, the bottoms of both of those guys. Okay, maybe I'll like also underline it in red. Maybe the next one we'll do in blue, kind of color code this, this whole thing. Um, how about let's find the area of this guy right here. Right there. Four times two. Four times two, can we just say eight? Yeah. Can we do it in our heads? All right, so that took care of that. Uh, maybe um, black for another one, and we'll do this front side, this front side right here. What's the area of this front side? 12. 12. And also, there's a, yeah, there's one in the back that's exactly the same. So we could just double it and say 24. That takes care of this one. And this one back here. All right. Um, then maybe in the, with the same kind of style, we'll take care of the front and back side of this guy here. What's the area of the front side? Times x. What is it? Three, three, three times x. Three x. But there's two of them, so there's a three x and there's another three x. Six x. Six x. Good. Two times three x is six x. So it takes care of the front side and the back side. Uh, I don't think I ever mentioned the top side here. No. So maybe we'll take care of that one. The top side right here. How would we calculate the top side? Two X. Times two. I'm sorry, the top of this we calculated how? 2x. Two, 2 times x, 2 times x. Okay, so that one's taken care of. The color coding's not working great up here, but it's working kind of. Let's use a light blue, and uh, let's see, maybe the top side of this one. What's the top side of this one? What's the area of that? 3 times 2. 3 times 6. 2, 6. Two light. Six, right? That's what that one is. All right. Let's see, we come the front, the back, uh, this right side, the top side, the top, front, back of that one, the bottom. So what do we have? We just have like this little sliver here, and then the left side over there. Okay. Uh, two. Say what? Two. This one's two. How do you know that? Because three, four minus two is one. So this side is four, right? And this bit is three. 
So that leaves one there. One times two is two. I'm running out of colors. There's not a lot of colors left to choose from. Plus two for this one. That leaves us with, if uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just this left side here, how, how much is that? Six. And we'll try using gray as if we could tell the difference between gray and purple on the screen. Whew. Okay, so that is the total surface area of that entire shape. And that all needs to come out to be what? Greater than 72. Greater than or equal to 72. Wait, just greater than, not equal to. Greater than 72. How are we going to solve this thing? What should we do first? It looks like a mess. Um, yeah, let's put those common terms together. Um, and what do we do with this guy? Distribute. Let's distribute. So it'll be 6 plus 2x. And then we have a bunch of like terms we can add together. Let's see, uh, 6x, 7, 8x. OK, so we've got 8x there. 8, 24, 32, no. Yeah. Yeah, 32. Mm -hmm. 32, uh, 38, uh, 46. If you think it's something other than 46, let me know. I might have done, you know, had an error in my mental math there. I think I got it. 2x plus 8x is 10x. 46 plus 6 is 52. Greater than 72. Good. Now that looks better. We collected like terms. It's a lot cleaner now. And now we can go about solving the inequality. I tried to do that last time. Anybody do that? Uh, yeah. Subtract 52. Subtract 52 from both sides. 10x equals, or sorry, it's greater than. Greater than 20. <coughs> Almost there. Ten and x must be greater than two. two. Great. So let's see. I don't know. Let's talk about it for a second. Uh, if we want to make sure that the the volume is bigger, you know, greater than or equal to forty-two, then x needs to be greater than or equal to three. Right? If it's greater than or equal to three, it's definitely greater than two. So it'll be more than seventy-two square inches. Sean? Um, on both of them, I did them a, a little bit different. I didn't like the structure of the equation the same way, but I took, I did found the area and the surface area, just the right box, and just subtracted it from what it had to be, so like 72 and 42. Oh, okay. And then I, and then I just found the, so on the top one I did 42 minus 24, and it had to equal 18, so I did Three times so you three did this first six. step kind of in your head. Yeah, I did, or I did three times two times x so has to equal eighteen, which then you simplify it. Right. So you had six x is greater than or equal to eighteen. Yeah. That was your first thing you wrote down. Uh, like that was the inequality you wrote down to solve. Yeah. Yeah. So you just did this part right here that we did in yeah. your head, and you started there. And then same with the other part, I just found the... So you found the surface area. area of this right box? Yeah, and then did the main equation for the left box. You added like 2 and 6 and 24 and yeah. 8 and took that away from 72. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not exactly the same, like I can't say like, oh, you subtracted 52, because you didn't subtract 52, mm -hmm. right? You subtracted just the area of the right box. That works too. Okay. So you got something more like 10x plus... I, I got... 6x x plus 4x plus 6, which was my Ah, plus 6. So you got the 6 on this side. Six. So you had, uh, right, 6x plus 6x. 4x. What's that? Oh, we're aside, 3x plus 3x, which is 6x plus 4 more x, right? Plus 4x. So that's 10x. Yeah. Plus 6. It needs to be greater than what? 26. 26, because 26 is 72 minus. Minus 46. All of the area of the right box. Yeah. That works too? The, the thing that we're, we're trying to sneak up on here is multi-step inequalities, okay? They're, they're very much like multi-step equations. We need to subtract from both sides usually. It's like the last two steps is subtract from both sides, or add to both sides, and then divide, right? We've done that so many times, right? Subtract something from both sides, like subtract 52 from both sides, divide by 10. Subtract 24 from both sides, divide by 6. 
How many times have you subtracted and divided? A lot. A lot of times. Like, maybe getting into the hundreds. Maybe, maybe even more than that. Um, so we, we solve these inequalities very much the same way as we solve equations. Really the only thing that's different, what's the one thing that's different when we're solving inequalities? Sean? The sign. What do you mean by that? Like the greater than or equal to. So yeah, the look of it is different. So we need to make sure that that's you know, like pointed the right way. And uh, speaking of making sure the sign's pointing in the right direction, there's a little tricky situation sometimes that happens, John. If you divide or multiply by negative, you have to flip the sign. Exactly. So if you multiply or divide by negative on both sides, you have to flip the sign around. You have to flip that inequality sign around. Okay. All right. I think we're ready. What with the distributing that we did and the combining like terms, all that kind of stuff. The only other thing I might throw in there is, uh, what if we had 5x plus 2 is less than or equal to 7 minus 8x? What would you, what would you do there, Grady? Just um, subtract 5x to both sides. And I get all the x's together, yeah. right? So negative 8x minus 5x, negative 13x. And then? Johnny? And then you subtract 7. Good. Less than or equal to negative 13x. Uh huh. And flip the sign. So we flip that sign around and get it pointed this way. So we have positive 5 thirteenths is greater than or equal to x. You might run into some distribution, collecting like terms, variables on both sides, and you need to get all the variables on one side together. Uh, and then Keep in mind, multiply, divide by a negative on both sides, flip that sign around. Uh, I've got a good long time. We can start it in our homework, which is right there. Make sure you're, like, you're all prepared. I wanted you to just be ready to talk about it here in class.